So what are you going to show me after lunch? I'll show you how to rake a coal bed in preparation for putting on a new load of wood. And I want to talk about different ways to load the stove depending on how much heat you need and how long you need it to burn before reloading. I had no idea there were techniques for that sort of thing. I'm looking forward to seeing this. That oh, lunch was great, Vanessa. Thanks. Well, the stove's still warm. It looks like there's some red coals in there. Where do we start? Well, one thing I wanted to mention before we get started is that wood fires do burn best when left to burn in cycles. A cycle starts when you rake the coal bed and place a new load of wood, and it ends when the load has been reduced to a coal bed and it's time to reload. So it's not a good idea to add a log or two every hour so the stove puts out a steady heat? No, not at all. If you put on one or two logs at a time, they will usually smolder. You need at least three at a time to create a sheltered pocket of glowing coals where the fire can get started. The idea is to ignore the fire until the room or house starts to cool off slightly, and then reload it. Notice the remaining coal bed is at the back of the firebox, furthest from the door. That is because most of the combustion air enters the firebox through this slot and reaches the fire at the front, so the fire burns from the front to the back. And that air keeps the glass clear too, right? Yes, it's called glass air wash. Now then, if this were the morning fire we were building after an overnight burn, we would find a lot of ash right here behind the door because we would have raked coals there several times the day before. So the best time to remove ash is first thing in the morning before disturbing the coal bed. Ah, that makes sense. In the cold part of the winter when I'm burning around the clock, I like to remove a small amount of ash each morning. Of course, we don't have to remove ash because we did that before lighting the kindling fire. Now here's the important part. We rake the coals forward like this, so that they are just inside the loading door. Then we'll place the new load of wood on and behind the coals. That way the combustion air reaches the coals first, then the wood, and we get fast ignition. Now because the floor of this firebox is roughly square, I can place my logs either north-south or east-west in the firebox. The fireboxes of a lot of stoves are oriented either one way or the other, so you might not have that option. And why does that matter? Well, a load of wood breaks down more slowly when placed east-west because the air isn't able to penetrate the load as much as it does a north-south load. That makes east-west loading better for mild weather when you want low heat over an extended period. North-south loading is better in very cold weather, both because it tends to burn faster and hotter, and you can fit more wood in the firebox because it can't roll out. I never knew that. Okay, let's get to it. Today is fairly mild, so we're going to load east-west using poplar. A lot of people say oak and maple make the best firewood. Yes, they do, but that advice is just a little old-fashioned now. Years ago, when people used old cast-iron parlor stoves, they couldn't get a fire to burn overnight unless they burned big chunks of hardwood. But I can get a good, clean, overnight burn using poplar in this stove, and I won't overheat the house in mild weather like this. Okay. I'm going to load the stove east-west. I put the biggest piece in first, then the next, and the next, and put the smallest piece of firewood on the coals. That's my igniter. I see what you're doing. You put the small piece on the coals where it'll ignite first. Right, and I put the larger pieces towards the back where they will break down slowly to extend the burn. Now I close the door and set the air control to fully open. Look at that, your smallest piece is already ignited. Exactly, that's the whole idea, a fast start and very little smoke. So you adjust heat output by the type of wood you use, hardwood for cold weather or softwood for mild weather. And by the way, you place the logs, east-west for mild weather or north-south for cold weather. Yes and also by how much wood I put on, smaller loads for mild weather. I'll build a small fire by placing a few small logs crisscross in the firebox if I just want to take the chill off the house. I had no idea there were so many ways to control heat output, and here I thought that's what the air control was for. Well, I do use the air control, but not before I've tried all the other ways first. Gee, that fire's getting pretty hot. Don't you worry about it overheating the walls behind the stove? No, I don't have to worry because this stove is installed exactly according to the manufacturer's instructions, so nothing will overheat. I know that because the guy who installed it is trained and certified under the WET program. That stands for Wood Energy Technical Training. Every time I load the stove for a new heating cycle, I need to burn it hot like this to heat up the chimney and firebox parts so the fire will burn clean. 
I guess you couldn't run the stove hot enough to burn clean if you were constantly worried about burning your house down. That's right. You would keep stove temperatures down, causing the wood to smolder, which produces a lot of smoke outside and creosote in the chimney. In fact, that is what leads to chimney fires. With a safe installation, I can run the stove hot enough at the start of each heating cycle. Now, I'm just going to reduce the air supply a bit at first to slow things down. You said earlier there were some other advantages to these EPA certified stoves. Advantages other than low pollution and high efficiency. Oh yes. Well, you noticed how quickly the fire started. Both our kindling fire earlier and this one started from hot coals. That's because these fire boxes are insulated and reflect heat back towards the fire, raising its temperature. This one also has a baffle at the top of the firebox that also acts as a reflective surface. Come and look inside the firebox and see all those flames up high. They are being fed by small jets of hot air fed to the fire through those secondary air tubes. That's how you get the clean burn and no visible smoke. Speaking of smoke, do you want to go outside and see if there's any smoke coming from the chimney? Oh, you bet I do. I should probably get going. I've already taken up too much of your time. Before we head outside, I'm just going to adjust the air control down. It's a good idea to turn the air control down in two or three stages as opposed to doing it in one big adjustment. Vanessa, you keep coming up with great tips I've never heard before. Well, I'll be darned. You wouldn't even know there was a fire burning. This is exactly what I wanted to show you, that using a good stove, good fuel, and good technique, you don't get smoke. Plus, by burning the smoke in the stove and not letting it escape up the chimney, you get much higher efficiency. More heat with less wood. This is great. I can hardly wait to try all this at home. I can't believe I've been heating with wood all this time and had so much more to learn. Thanks, Vanessa. I really appreciate your teaching me all this new stuff. You're very welcome. Be sure to let me know how you make out. You bet I will. Thanks again.